Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Rabia. And this is Sounds Like on Anderson's TV. So, cool. we are talking about a yep. very, very special guitar player today, aren't we? He is one of the, the ultimate greats. Yeah, he's the king, actually. It is yeah, in his you. name. There you go. Not Elvis. No, no, it's not. Who is it? It is B.B. King. B.B. King. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he died this year, didn't he? He did, in 2015, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but he was still gigging right up until the end, wasn't he? He was, hospital. yeah. He's one of those guys that's famous. He's, he's one of the like original blues guys. In fact, he's so famous that I don't really know why I'm explaining. <laughs> it, like, yeah. Just in case you don't know. Um, yeah. But he's, he, he played, I think he played over 200 gigs a year into his 70s. So that's he was, insane. He was a tough guy. And to be honest, this is a, tough, this is a tall order for me to try and play like B.B. King because it is well hard. Yeah, Beer's going to give it a shot. But um, yeah. again, B.B. King is one of those guys that I think it's, more about his fingers than exactly yeah. what gear he uses. So because well, it's such a super stripped down, simple sort sort of rig, isn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. So, but I mean, like, unfortunately, we don't have Lucille, and we don't have his fingers. No, because Lucille costs a lot of money. You can get an Epiphone Lucille, but also, yeah, um, that was a little bit out of out of the price range we were but, looking for, really. Yeah, Lucille is BB King's signature. For those who don't know, who you, who, yeah, Lucille. He talked highly of her. Well, yeah. he did. He has a song called Lucille, and yeah, Gibson started making him a signature guitar in about 1980, I think. Um, mm. It's based essentially on the ES-335, um, pretty much the same guitar, but always black. Yeah, lovely, lovely looking guitar. Yep. Why is the guitar called Lucille? So the story goes, okay, loosely, don't quote me on any of this, is that there are, he was in a bar, had plenty of gig, um, oh, yeah. and a fire, a fire broke out, he yeah. legged it, and then remembered he'd left his guitar in there, I uh, ran back in, two guys having a bit of a brawl over a woman called, called Lucille. Lucille. Um, so basically he named his guitar and all his guitars, it's not just one guitar, it's kind of like a every few. every guitar he's had yeah. that looks the same called Lucille. Yeah, he basically named it that to remind himself never to do stupid things like... Risk his life for yeah. a guitar, I guess. Running into, running into bur burning buildings and fighting over women, essentially. Yeah, or, yeah, I guess just playing a gig in a place where people start fighting about women. Yeah, or, But, you know, you can't players. control these things. People fight over women all the time. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so we're doing BB King, and it's a reasonably simple rig, and we've got a budget to keep it in line with sort of around the 1,500 quid mark, haven't we? 1500 British sterling pounds is, is I keep the saying quid, but yeah, we, it's British sterling. Yeah. So let me show you what we've chosen for the Sound Like BB King. So this is a stunning guitar that I've been playing today, and it sounds great. And this is an Epiphone Sheraton based on a Gibson uh, 3, 355, actually. And I think Lucille was based on the 345. And I think there was a few extra fills on it and stuff like that, but it had a Veritone switch as well, which this doesn't. This has just got a three-way. Uh, two humbuckers, and they're the kind of Alnico classic, the Epiphone yeah. Pro Buckers, aren't they? Yeah, Epiphone's own. Mm. So. But it it's lovely. It's nice. It's a hollow body guitar. It's got nice um, binding around the headstock, and it just looks. It looks kind of similar. If we had a black one, it would have looked even more similar. I always think these these always look above their price point. Definitely. Yeah. Like, this is this is about five hundred pounds. Yeah. And it, yeah, it looks a lot more. I would definitely own one of these guitars because they have a particular tone that you don't really get from a, a solid body guitar. You know what I mean? So I really really enjoy the way it sounds. Um, so that's the guitar, and then we're running it into a Princeton, a Fender Princeton, Fender ampli Princeton yeah. amplifier, and it's only a little thing. But it packs a punch, and um, essentially we just got it running through the first input um, and running the volume reasonably high. But it just has treble and bass. We're leaving the tremolo side, as it were, because we just want a beautiful clean tone with a nice uh, reverb tank in it, really. Oh yeah, yeah, and they're and they're well within budget. I think this is less than eight hundred pounds. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, BB King's well known for playing Fenders early, early. In Super school, I clean think. sound, yeah. really intense, like. But yeah, the old school Fender Twins and stuff back in the day, or whatever was available, really. Yeah, the tone we're going for is is super clean, and um, he, he I mean, often often his playing seems is 
just so delicate. Yeah. Where you can almost hear like the the wood breathing, you know. Yeah, he's got he's a very dynamic player. Yeah. That's why it's so hard to sound like him, I find as well. You know, it's really, really hard to play that quietly sometimes. Yeah. And really like where you get like the pop of the speaker. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um but the thing with the BB King tone is that there's obviously that beautiful clean tone, a really nice crisp clean tone, but also in a few videos that we watched and had a look at different tones. Um, there's a video from the Montreux Jazz Festival. Yeah, in 1993. And it, it's a bit, you know, it's sort of reasonably like held back, but there's a little bit of a bite. It's like a soft bite, and then he goes for it a bit more, doesn't he? And it's I got think... more gain in it. Most of the recorded stuff I heard was super, super clean. Yeah, exactly. But then I think we 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 looked at a load of live footage just to make sure that we were kind of in a in covering around. all bases. Yeah, and it does it does when the band all picks up, mm. the, the tone kind of does break up a bit and yeah, is, is a lot louder. So we we opted for a couple of pedals. We did um, to give us a hand with that. So we've got the full we've got the full tone plimsoll. Um, which, to be honest, we're running it. Cause it's quite a high gain pedal. It's a drive pedal, but we've got it pretty much on its lowest gain setting. Um, but we've we've used it for extra mid range. Yeah, um, the high cut does really boost our yeah boost our mids because yeah. on this amp there is literally no the, mid control, no, nothing mid. So it's a bass and treble and volume. And this really helps us out here, doesn't it? Yeah, and then we've got an EP boost as well uh, by Exotic, which I'm sure m many of you know, and that. Also, it sweetens it up a bit, gives you a little bit more kick. Um, and the two together, to be honest, made a massive difference. Absolutely. We tried yeah. one and then we tried both. And to be honest, the two together through that amplifier. Um, and also, it's really important to say, rolling off your tone on the guitar, on the Sheraton. I'm, I mean, I'm on the bridge pickup and I'm rolling it down to like two. Yeah. I mean, we did find a, an, as well, mid position worked for quite a few of the sounds. Yeah, so we, um, we rolled the treble off, we rolled the tone off both pickups, yep. and then I rolled the volume down a little bit on the neck pickup, put it in the middle, and to... Just the amp on its own. Which is sounds awesome. Yeah, it does. But once you push in the once you push in the EP boost for a start, yep. and put it back on the bridge pickup and roll off the turn. I mean, it's much much higher volume, but it's got a thick. It's like the top end is soft, but it's really punchy, isn't it? Yeah. I love doing Beautiful. that. That's the BB King thing, isn't it? But then, yeah, now, if you add the plimsoll, then you get that kind of soft, slightly gainy kind of thing that he has. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't actually come across as like a gainy sound, does it? No. Often, well, it, the playing's so light. Yeah, I mean, I don't play anywhere near as light as BB King. It's really hard. Like, if any of you try, that you know, it's hard. It is very difficult. It's, a, it's that question of, like, not playing, like, anything. Yeah, it's what but, you don't play. There you go. That's what I was told as a kid, as a childling. Trying to get this BB King tone that we found is, like, when it comes to specific songs, because it's kind of a vamp, a blues vampy kind of thing, and then he's just you know playing blues over the top of it but also by the fact i think he started playing in like 1949 yeah. and died last year so that's 66 years so there's that's mental arithmetic master over here yeah there's quite a lot of uh, different sounds over that time especially i guess being one of the originals he was born in like memphis tennessee so it's like the original blues the birthplace stuff. of all that stuff exactly 
I mean, the thing about the BB King turn, as you rightly pointed out, was just that it spans over such a long time. Yeah. Um, that it's just really hard to pinpoint a specific tone. So we tried to. That's why we used the pedals on top of the amp itself and the guitar just to try and get the essence of. Yeah, and I think when, especially if you're starting like 50s and till the 2000s, technology and kind of mm. amps and everything like do have moved on a little bit in that time. So to actually get anywhere close is pretty difficult. And yeah. he's, he's a phenomenal player as well. So Yeah, um, and I'm most certainly not BB King. He wasn't a pedal guy, we can say that much. No, it wasn't. It's was pretty <laughs> straightforward. So, so adding that, sorry to the, the purists, but that's you know what we had to do. Yeah, we it's did. It's kind of like the uh, Tabasco in your in your pasta, in your bolognese. I've never used Tabasco in my bolognese. You should try it. It adds a nice little bit of kick that you wouldn't think would be there. But Basically like the plimsoll exactly. in this particular rig. Exactly. And on that note, I would like to say that I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, and now, anyone wants to comment on it or suggest any more Sounds Like videos, please do so in the comment section below and just let us know your thoughts. I've, to be honest, I've enjoyed this one. Yeah, and I'd just like to pay my respects to the master of the blues, which is BB King. Thank you, man. Yeah, we hope you, we've uh, not insulted you too much. I hope you're not turning in your grave. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been Matt. I've been Rabir. And this has been Sounds Like on Anderson CV. See ya. Yeah! <laughs> Keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay.